Let's be honest. You can write the perfect formula, have all the right data sources, the great controls, a beautiful design, and still build a terrible app. Huh? Yeah, that's right, you can. Why? Because oftentimes people make all these mistakes before you put the first piece of code into your app on the planning, the design, the, you know, who you're going to involve to get to all requirements gathering steps. You make mistakes there that you just can't overcome even with the most perfect formula ever written. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take all the lessons I have learned over the thousands of apps that we have built here at Power Apps 911, along with all the training we've done in our university program, I distilled it down to just five quick little talking points that we're going to run through here. So a little bit different show today, but should be interesting and should help you make sure that you're doing a good job building apps, not just on the formula side, but planning, design, requirement gathering. Sound fun? Then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. First up, let's start with the age old question. Who needs users anyway, right? How many of you have ever been involved with a app project where you were building something for a group of end users and some other department over here? And not a single time did you talk to those users, right? I can tell you it happens all the time, right? Either the fancy people in IT or the pointy hair manager types, like everyone's like, oh, we know what they need. We're just going to build them this, right? Because I know what the user wants. You probably don't. So one of my biggest pet peeves, right, is when you're building your app, if the users are more likely to be found hiding under the table than in the planning meetings and the requirements gathering meetings, you're probably doing something maybe not the way you should. So what you really need to do is you need to make the user the star. So what do I mean by that? I mean, I want you to get the users involved, right? So if you're going to build something for the, you know, finance department, uh, the people that enter crunch numbers, I don't know, whatever those people do, right? Get one or two or more of those people involved in the app, not just to ask them what they want, but as part of the project planning process, the requirements gathering, obviously, but also then the testing and the iterations that you go through, right? There's one big reason for that. There's several reasons for it, but the biggest reason is that those people will become your champions, right? At some point, you're going to finish the app, I hope, and then you're going to roll it out to that whole floor of people. And wouldn't it be nice if someone that they work with, one of their peers right there sitting beside them is like, oh yeah, I helped build this app. I'm excited about this app. Let me show you how this app works. Let me show you about this feature I got added. Ooh, let me tell you about this bug that I helped them fix, right? You create a champion. By creating that champion, you greatly increase the chance of success of your app and the app being used because now you have people that are emotionally, physically invested in your app on the floor using it and helping others. So not only will you have built a better app, but now you're going to get more adoption because you've got people built in, right? So there you go. Make the user the star, the king, walk the red carpet, whatever you want to say, but getting users involved in the app building process, planning process, testing process, and rollout process will get you better results. Next up, don't build one mega app, right? We see this all the time. People want to build one app to rule them all. Some monster app that just is like, oh yeah, look at my big old app. It's so cool. The problem with giant apps is a few things, right? One is performance tends to go down, right? The more that you've got, but you're like, eh, it's fast enough, it's okay. Two, if anything goes wrong with the app and that app goes down, you're making more people angry. That's never fun. But three, the most important reason you don't want to build one big giant app is it's going to be about usability, right? Because when you build one app that does everything, what happens? You land on the home screen, there's 24 buttons to pick from. And now I got to know, oh yeah, I need to pick this button on this screen, this button on this button, right? To get to the place where I can do my job. That means your app is going to need lots of training. We don't want that, right? What we want is what I refer to as the Hulk smash mentality. I want an app, I open it up, it does one thing, and it does that one thing really well, right? When you try to make it do a bunch of things, you end up pandering to the lowest common denominator, you get a generic app, one highly focused app. The example I always use is for a group up in Canada that I helped many, many moons ago. But basically, they wanted to do a time reporting, an approval, and, you know, reconciliation app, right? And they thought it was one big solution. The problem was the people entering the time were a bunch of service workers out in the Canadian wilderness, right? They were all on their mobile phones. The people that needed to approve the app were sitting in desktops and project trailers, and then the people that needed to do all the reconciliation, is that a word? I think I'm saying that right. 
all of those people, they were in uh, back at corporate headquarters, right? Three different distinct audiences with three distinct different purposes. So we built three distinct apps, right? We made a mobile app for those construction workers, right? The service people. There was about a thousand of them. So we have a thousand employees, right? Basically every day, someone's either quitting or starting, right? Like, so you got a high turnover, or not even high turnover, you got low turnover, you're still gonna have people churning through. We couldn't be like, oh yeah, to fill out a timesheet, we need four hours of training. So you open up the timesheet app, right? Somebody gives you the timesheet app, you open it up, it's like, all right, what project did you show, work on? It just shows you your three projects. Oh, I did that one. Hulk smash that one button. And then it's like, all right, how many hours did you work today? Type in a number, Hulk smash that big button. Another screen, right? Like we just made it super duper simple, straightforward. There were no decisions to be made. You just need to enter a few pieces of information. Boom, we got your time in. Then, right, that's saved in the Dataverse. And then the uh, project manager could go and approve, reject, do all the things with their time, right? In the trailer, connect to that same data, corporate, same data. So one solution, one data set, but three different small apps got us a better solution. So smaller focused apps are always going to be a better end result, right? So easier to use, no training. And then of course the uh, performance enhancements. And you know, when things go bad, it's not too bad. So keep that in mind. Smaller apps are better. One giant app, bad. Oh, how'd this get in here? Well, just a good reminder, right? Like this type of project requirements gathering, thinking, I call it business analyst light, right? This is actually taken from one of the live classes that I do in my university program. University is a combination of our 18 live classes that are taught by me and some of the other experts here at Power Apps 911. It is then also includes all of the live public classes we do. It includes all of our on-demand training. It gets you a mentor. It gets you a hands-on project and even an exam to get a certificate at the end, right? It is a full-on six-month program. Uh, if you want to be the most awesomest ever at Power Platform, come check out the program. Next up, we have Don't Build for the Unicorn. I had a lot of fun making these pictures. Can you tell? So Don't Build for the Unicorn. What we run into sometimes when people are designing and thinking about their app, right? Like they got a good idea about the app they want to make, but then they're like, you know, there's this one small chance that maybe possibly could be Susie's going to log in from this, from, you know, her Mediterranean cruise, log on to it from, you know, some phone from 400 years ago, right? Like we better make sure the app supports that too. No, 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 no. So often we run into people that when they're planning out their apps, they have all the good ideas of the things they should build the app for, but then they let, you know, bad ideas sneak in there, right? They start thinking about those one-off crazy scenarios, the unicorns of the world, and then they start adding requirements for that, which you're like, well, that's great, it can serve more people. It is, but it might double or triple the complexity of their app, right? You wanna build for the people that are actually going to use your app day in, day out. My number one thing that I think about when I go through these couple slides here is like responsive, right? If you ask someone, should the app be responsive? Well, the answer is always, of course it should be, right? Every app should just work on my phone, my tablet, and my desktop, no matter what. Okay, right? That quadrupled your quote. And then, I, oh, you know, in reality, um, I'm only ever gonna do this on my desktop. So why don't we just put it on the desktop, right? Like, you've got to think about that. Just because you can do something doesn't mean it's a good idea, right? We used to use the analogy, just because you can teach a bear to dance doesn't mean you should. Just because you can make an app responsive doesn't mean you should. Just because you can make an app work offline doesn't mean you should. Like, you know, you've got to really think about it and say, all right, is the juice worth the squeeze? Man, I'm full of analogies right now. But is it, you know, does it make sense for what we really wanted to accomplish, right? Because by adding those things, you're extending your timelines, you're extending your requirements, like you're just making the project take longer, cost more money. Do you need that? Maybe you do, maybe you really do need to account for all those scenarios, great. The platform can support that. But a lot of times it's like, hey, you know, we could serve 99% of the requests with this one app. Let's start there, see if we really get any demand to, you know, do the others. So just be smart about that. Don't over plan for your unicorns. Where is the finish line? So this is one, this is for my buddy Scuba, right? Like he's always struggled with this with his customers. When he would start an app, they're like, all right, build me blah, blah, blah. 
And then scope, scrape, scope, creep, scope, creep, right? Like the project would never end, which, you know, as people that do billable consulting, like we do it here at Power Apps 911, like, yay! But it drove Scuba crazy, right? Why? Because he needed a finish line. He needed to be done, even if he was going to keep going, if he was going to do it again, right? But what you've really got to do is you've got to get in a place where you define what success looks like, right? So if he could say, hey, when the app does these four things, we're done, yay. Then we're going to do another project, right? We're going to do these next six ideas that you have. They're great ideas, but we're going to put those in the next phase and we're going to put another finish line there so he could finish, right? He never got that sense of accomplishment because we never defined what success looks like. So every project you do, I know a lot of you build just internally. You still need to define success. On what day when these X things are done, can I say that, yes, I'm finished this project. Maybe we're going to do more things. Maybe we're going to do another phase starting the five minutes later. That's fine. But everyone wants that sense of accomplishment so that you don't look back and go, well, yeah, I've been working on this app for three years. Like, what happened, right? But if you could say, over the last three years, we've rolled out five different versions of this app, right, all progressively better, you're just going to feel better. Everyone's going to feel better, right? So always, always, always have a finish line. Don't let those evil people move it on you. Get a finish line. Be able to run through it. Be able to mark that off. Maybe you start another race right on the other side of the finish line. That's okay. We want you to define success and get success. It's just good for everyone. All right, this picture's a little much, but, you know, sometimes you get to what you get when you, uh, when you do AI pictures, right? But the app can't fix the business process. So... We run into this all the time, right? People come to us, they're like, hey, I want you to build me a Power Apps app that, you know, does this. And we're like, all right, well, cool. What's the existing process look like? They're, oh, yeah, well, the existing process, um, you know, either doesn't exist or is terrible or, yes, we have a business process, but, well, Susie doesn't have to follow it and Timmy doesn't have to follow it and Bob only has to follow it on Tuesdays. Like, if you don't have a structured, repeatable business process, there's just no way you're going to successfully build a Power App or a Power Automate Flow or a Copilot Studio agent. You're not going to successfully win that one, right? You're never going to get to that finish line because you're trying to build the airplane while it's in flight. Yeah, that's why I get a scary picture here. So don't do that, right? What we need you to do is we need you to define the business process. Be like, all right, here's how I get to the end, right? Here's where everything, um, here's how we do things. This is our structured approach. Now, let's appify that. That is the only way that you're going to be successful. And the thing that I want to remind you about the most there is that, you know, forever, right? I've been in IT since you know, the late 90s. So let's not talk about that. But, you know, it used to be that we would go buy packaged software and then we'd take that software and make, all right, well, software can do this. Now, Mr. Business Process, you got to work around what this app can and can't do, right? We did that for a long, long time. One of the glorious things about Power Apps, right? We start with that blank white screen. We can make it do whatever we want it to do. So you tell me your business process. You tell me how things work around here, how you want it to go, and then I can build an app that works and achieves that for you, right? I can't tell you how many customers we've had the honor of doing that for, where they had, you know, $100,000 a year SaaS software that, did what they wanted, kind of, but basically they had molded their business around that software. We're like, all right, clean slate. How do you want this process to go? They'd be like, oh, well, it'd be really great if it did boom, 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 boom. And then there you go. The Power App could do boom, 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 because the software, right, we wrote Power Apps to do exactly what they wanted instead of what the software wanted. It's a real brain shift to start thinking about it from not can the software or, you know, what does the software want my business to do? It's... What does the business want the software to do? But you've got to have that defined business process first to be successful. So there you go. A little bit of a different type of session. What'd you think? Did you like that? I, you know, making a PowerPoint uh, presentation for a YouTube video felt really weird, but I thought it was the best way to communicate that. And the fun pictures made me feel a lot better than silly bullet points. Um, but, you know, all of that learning just comes from the thousands and thousands of apps we've built at Power Apps 911. We're happy to build apps for you. Or if you don't want us to build the app, you just want us to do an architectural review, or you just have one formula that doesn't work, you need us to fix it. We can do all of those things. Or we can just train you, right? Go join us over at training.powerapps91.com. Join my six-month university. Can you imagine 
18 live sessions just like this for an hour listening to me talk, but you get to talk back, right? It's not just me yelling at you. They're a lot of fun. All right, questions, comments, all right? Down below, tell me, do you want to see more of these videos? Yes or no? Did you enjoy this video? Yes or no? Do you have any tips to share with other people? Oh, other people like to read your tips. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.